Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It hasn't been particularly warm recently, but if you're lucky enough to have one of these things, I think you may well be grateful for it at times during the next two weeks, particularly if you live in the southern half of Britain. Now, the highest temperature on record is 38.7 Celsius. That was recorded on the 25th of July 2019 at Cambridge University Botanic Gardens. I'm not expecting it to be broken during the next fortnight, but there is just a chance that it could be challenged, and I'll look at that in a more detail a little bit later on. Coming back to week one, the animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 5th of July. High pressure is already having a good deal of influence, although in the northwest, disturbances are still pushing in from the Atlantic and they are bringing rain at times. The general theme doesn't change a great deal in the short term, often dry in southern and central regions, more mixed in the northwest. That continues to be the case into the weekend. So for much of the UK, it should be dry, but there is that ongoing risk there in the far north, northwest of wetter conditions. As we head into next week, though, things do begin to shift. The high pressure moves northeastwards and becomes centred across the UK. So it's really a dry picture in all parts of the country by then, if this is correct. That will also be having an impact on the air mass temperatures. The sequence here is also using the GFS data. It starts again 18 GMT, Tuesday the 5th. To begin with, it's not a particularly warm profile across the UK. The greens there suggesting rather close to the average. But in the short term, the yellows and oranges build. But then through the weekend, somewhat cooler air moves down from the northwest for a time. However, in the early part of next week, the yellows and oranges return strongly northwards, covering all of the UK. What that means in terms of the temperatures that we're going to be experiencing down at the ground level, well, I'll show several uh, predictions from the GFS. 15 GMT, Wednesday the 6th, 23s, 24s in much of southern and central parts of Britain, cooler there in the northwest. Going forwards to Friday, Temperatures are climbing, 27, 28 in the London area, still cooler in the northwest, but even in eastern Scotland there, 20, 21 possible, so pleasantly warm. Saturday, by now just temperatures dipping a little bit, it's cooler air moves down from the northwest, but still 25, 26 in the south. By Sunday, climbing again, and 29 Celsius there in the London area, with the GFS tending to undershoot a little bit, would suggest that 30 isn't out of the question. Also, as the daytime temperatures are rising, the nighttime ones are too. By Monday, 06 GMT, these are forecast minimums. In the London area, they're 18 Celsius. So starting to become rather uncomfortable on some nights for sleeping, particularly in the city centres. That's definitely something to be aware of as we go through week one and into week two, but as I'll look at week two in a moment. Monday afternoon, very warm, potentially hot in southern and central Britain there with temperatures once more close to 30 Celsius. And even in eastern Scotland there, 22, maybe 23, quite warm. The MoGreps temperature chart supports that general trend it, so in the short term, it's becoming warmer in the London area. Then there's that little dip. And then later on, towards the end, there is a bigger spread there. But the general theme is for temperatures to be climbing. So often warm or even very warm in the south, maybe somewhat cooler for a time before the heat starts to build towards the end of the first week and maybe beyond. But let's say... I will look at that in a moment. Rainfall. GFS and ECM deterministic five-day accumulations here. Dry for large parts of the UK. It's just really Western Scotland where there are significant amounts. The 0 to 10 day charts, the theme is a similar one. More rain in Western Scotland. The, the totals have continued to rise there especially on the ECM, which is the left-hand side chart. 
but it's completely dry in large parts of southern and central Britain. So not a great deal of rain around at all through days 0 to 10 for most of us if the two deterministic snapshots are correct. So do the deterministic models agree with each other at the end of week one about high pressure being dominant? Here's the GFS, Tuesday the 12th of July, high pressure slap bang over the UK. The Canadian model, a little bit different, low pressure there in the north, having more influence possibly, although in southern and central regions it's a settled and very warm or hot picture. The German icon, again high pressure dominating, particularly over the southern half of the UK. The European ECM, high pressure, looks very settled according to this particular run. And finally, the UK Met Office Global model. Once more, it's a settled theme across virtually the whole of the country at that point. Good agreement, therefore. High pressure is likely to be dominant. It's going to be bringing settled conditions, particularly to the southern half of the UK. There is a chance of things being more mixed in the north, especially the northwest. That covers week one. Temperatures rising, very warm at times. Does that trend continue as we go through week two? I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, much above the average, and there are a few extreme runs in the mix. Really exceptional. Some of the individual runs, I think it's about six or seven, are going above 20 Celsius at the 850 HPA level. That's 1,500 meters above our heads. If conditions are right at the ground level, so cloudless skies, uh, light winds, it suggests that very, very high temperatures are possible mid 30s Celsius, certainly not out of a question, and just a chance, as I was hinting, that we could be approaching record levels on some days. But the most likely scenario is for temperatures to be well above the average into the low 30s on a number of days, um, probably about 60 to 70 percent chance of that being the outcome and a smaller 20 to 30 percent chance of getting some of those extremely high uh, levels being reached. Rainfall across the bottom, well, it's a dry picture to start off with, but later on there are a few spikes showing up. That could be because areas of low pressure are beginning to push in, and conversely that may have the effect of uh, helping temperatures to climb at least for a short time because it could start to pull up even hotter air from southern Europe as low pressure moves in from the Atlantic, high pressure to the east. The combination before the cooler conditions would return may allow some of that record-breaking warmth to move northwards and that could well be what some of those extreme runs are forecasting. Going up to uh, Glasgow, above average in terms of air mass temperatures. Even here, there are one or two notably warm runs. To see one of the GEFS runs going above 20 Celsius at this level in the northwest of UK is truly exceptional. But of course, it's only one out of the 33 uh, runs which are being plotted there. Rain across the bottom, quite dry to begin with. Then the number of spikes also increases later on. And some of those are pointing towards heavy rain, so maybe some downpours if they turn out to be correct. The two meter temperature data table for London, well, each column here shows the forecast maximums from all the runs in the GEFS on the given days. 
Reds and pinks are dominating early on. For reds, 26 to 30 Celsius. For pinks, over 30 Celsius. To summarise this, it suggests, I think, a good chance of heat wave conditions. It's not certain, of course. There's some orange in there, even a little bit for light orange. Those are runs going for 16 to 20 Celsius, but they're in a very, very small minority. I've got to say, this is probably the warmest uh, or hottest GEFS data table at the two meter level that I've ever seen um, on the Weather Outlook website. I think these data tables have been available for only for a couple of years, but this one is truly exceptional. And if we break it out to see the individual runs and the values which they're going for, the pinks there, many of them are in the, into the low 30s, the reds into the high 20s, but I've circled the extreme runs and there are a number of them, 37.5, 36, 37, 37 again. And then a truly exceptional one on the uh, 20th of July. If you look across the right there, it's, uh, it's got the yellow around it. It's forecasting 41.1 Celsius. If that happened, it would be a huge jump in the UK temperature record. And there have been a number of ensemble runs in recent days and one or two operationals which have been going for temperatures of 40 Celsius or over. It is unlikely to happen, I think, in the next couple of weeks, but it can't be completely discounted as long as at least some of the computer model runs are suggesting it. But really, just to highlight why there's no confidence at all in that happening, if we look on the final column, which is for the 20th of July, I've also um, highlighted the coolest run in the ensemble, surrounded it in blue, and it's going for a forecast maximum of 18.2 Celsius. That's, come, that's at the bottom end of the ensemble. At the top end, we've got the 41.1 Celsius. So it's a massive, massive range. And the most likely outcome is somewhere in between, probably in the 20 to 30 range by that point. But who knows? It, as I say, it's not completely completely out of the question that we could have a new temperature record and it's definitely worth keeping an eye on the short range forecasts through the coming days. The two meter uh, temperature data table for Glasgow, much cooler of course. The light oranges and the dark oranges, dominant 16 to 20, 21 to 25 Celsius. There is a little red in there, one or two runs going for 26 to 30, which would certainly be very, very notable for the northwest of the UK, but generally a cooler picture. Probably still a little bit above the average, though, even, even in the northwest. The uh, GEFS 10 days pressure mean plot, so this is for Friday the 15th of July, suggests that high pressure will be dominant across the UK, and the European ensemble plot at the same time is also supporting the same theme. If anything, there's just possibly an indication of warmer air being just a fraction further north, but I wouldn't read a great deal into it at this range. The final uh, plot is the uh, surface level pressure data table for York. To begin with, yellows and oranges suggesting higher than average uh, pressure, but there's a clear trend later onwards for pressure to start falling quite slowly perhaps, and it is that same point which I made that as pressure begins to fall, maybe low pressure slow move into west of the UK for a time, it does increase the chance of very, very warm air being pulled northwards across the UK. It's all about timing and how quickly the Atlantic would return, but a day or two's delay would give the possibility of those exceptionally high temperatures being recorded. Definitely something to look out for. Anyway, to summarize, week one, often dry in the south, 
but there is a rain risk in the north and particularly the northwest. Temperatures will general, generally be climbing, although they may cool for a short time, and some days will be very warm in the south. Week two, temperatures much above the average are favoured. Heat wave conditions are very possible and the mid 30 Celsius could be reached. Records are not entirely out of the question. That's not a forecast, it's just something to keep an eye on. Towards the end of the second week, the risk of a breakdown increases, especially in the northern half of the UK. That would lead to cooler air beginning to return. Note, hot conditions are not a certainty through this period, and some of the computer model runs are going for cooler scenarios. So, there we have it. On balance, it looks as though there's going to be a lot of warm or very warm or even hot weather during the next two weeks. There is a chance, just a relatively small chance at the moment, of extremely high temperatures being recorded. Definitely something to keep an eye on through the coming days. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful as ever. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below if you did. Thanks for watching now. Bye.